Hi guys, we're on to chapter two. Bienvenida tia Lola. Miguel cannot believe how much luggage his aunt has brought from the Dominican Republic. Two big suitcases covered in plastic wrap. Para más seguridad, tia Lola explains, for more security. She raised her eyebrows as if the crown jewel were as if the crown jewel were packed inside. A box with a piñata, which tia Lola says they should have for a special occasion a duffel bag full of gifts from their cousins, aunts, and uncles, a tube with rolled up Dominican re, re, the Dominican flag inside, a flowered carpet bag with Tia Lola's cositas, her this is and that. Miguel looks at the pile of luggage, which he has helped unload from the car. How long did she say, you, how long did you say she's staying? Tia Lola, he asked. ¿Qué dice? Tia Lola wants to know what Miguel has asked. Miguel shakes his head and picks up a bag. He starts the long trek up the stairs to the room they have fixed up for the, his aunt. The next day, Tia Lola is still unpacking. No sabes qué traer, she explained. She didn't know what to bring, so she brought a little bit of everything. First, Tia Lola unpacks a small case she has carried by hand. It is full of makeup and rollers, earrings, and several jars with odd ingredients, which Mommy says are probably potions. Tucked at the bottom of at the bottom of the bottles of agua de Florida, which Tia Lola sprinkles around the room. Why'd she do that? Miguel asks his mother. It's good luck water, Mommy exclaim, explains. Tia Lola is something of a santaria. It's like a doctor who works with magic instead of medicine. Can I tell the kids in school, Juanita asks. Her, her face is full of excitement, as if she has just learned she has a relative who, can, who came over on the Mayflower. Please, Mommy, tell her not to, Miguel, please. All he needs is for his new classmates to find out he has a nutcase for a relative. Tia Lola unpacks her bright summer dresses and her black hat with a veil. She unpacks a half dozen pair of high heels to match all the different colors of her outfits and a dozen bright banuelos to wrap around her head like a turban. When she is working her magic, her, closest looks, her closet looks like a midsummer flower garden. She unpacks her maracas and a tambor to make music in case there's a fiesta. She pu puts on her can canasta and clacks around the room, stomping her feet as if she's throwing a tantrum. Their mother and Juanita join in, acting goofy. Isn't she fun? Her mother keeps asking Miguel. Tia Lola packs bags of café and brown sugar, which go up on the kitchen shelves. Her spices, hierbabuena, oregano, anise, hojas de guanabana, hang from the rafters. She also brings along her goya her, to cur create yaca and her bu burrel to shape it into flat, round cuevas loaves. The goya looks like an oversized grater and the burin like a large smooth stone. Tia, Lora, Tia Lola's vendura seeds are put in a pot to germinate. Ay, que bueno, Miguel's mother claps her hands. We'll all have Dominican cooking in Vermont. We'll have to invite Rudy over. She is helping Tia Lola drape her mantilla, mantilla across the window. It looks like a beautiful black spider web with a bright red rose pinned at the center. As they work, they dance to one of Tia Lola's merengues on the stereo. Juanita follows along, moving her hips. One, two, one, two, one, two. Isn't she fun? Her mother keeps asking. I guess, Miguel mutters. And then because his mother is looking straight at him, he adds, she's lots of fun, mommy. Miguel has, has to admit there's there is one totally fun thing about Tia Lola. She tells great stories. None of Miguel, of none of Tia Lola's, Tia Lola sounds exactly true, but Miguel doesn't care. While he listens, he feels as if he isn't in Vermont at all, but in a magical world where anything can happen. In fact, what is most magical is how even though in his daily conversations with Tia Lola, Miguel sometimes doesn't understand Tia Lola's Spanish. Still, when she tells stories, Miguel seems to understand every word. Había una vez, Tia Lola begins, once upon a time. 
and Miguel feels a secret self different from his normal everyday self rising up like steam from a boiling kettle into the air and disappearing into Tia Lola's stories. Every night, Tia Lola gathers Miguel and Juanita in her bedroom while her mother takes some time to herself to make phone calls or continues unpacking boxes still stacked in the attic. Tia Lola tells them all about their large and exciting Dominican family. She tells about their uncles, with, their uncle with six fingers who can do anything with his hands and about their great-grandmother who could read the future from looking at the stains in a coffee cup and about their cousin who once befriended a guapa which with pastillos, little fritters filled with ground meat. As like chihuahuas, they are beautiful, mysterious creatures who come out at night. But no one can ever catch them. They have special secrets. The Gikapa's feet are on backwards, so they leave footprints in the opposite direction of where they're going. The next weekend, since he has no friends here and nothing to do, Miguel tries out that trick in the snow. The footprints look haywire and messy, like someone stumbled around, but they do not look like Kiwapa's footprints. One afternoon, two of Miguel's classmates show up at the front door. In the car, the mother of one of the boys waits, peering up at the old gable house. The boys are collecting money for the town's little league team. Come spring, they will need equipment and uniforms. Wow, Miguel said, I'd really like to be on that team. You should try out, one of the boys says. The taller one's name is Dean. He has bright blue eyes, like Miguel's father would call ultramarine, and a wide grin his mother would call trouble with a capital T. As the boys stand in the mudroom talking, Tia Lola walks by in her spiked heels and white turban, holding up a plate of smoking embers. She has already cleaned the basement and is on her way upstairs. She wants to cast out any bad spirits and attract good spirits and magical kiwapas from the island. The boys' mouths drop open. Who, who's that? The smaller boy, Sam, asks. His fine blonde hair stands on in naturally from electricity, but now he looks, of, he looks as if he has just had a terrible fright. Miguel turns his head and looks then, shrugs as if no one is there. As the boys hurry down the front step, Miguel, Miguel hears Dean say, I bet it was a ghost. My mom says this whole house is haunted. Miguel shuts the door and leans against it, his face pale, as if he has seen a ghost. Then he looks up, Tia Lola is looking back at him. That night, a snowstorm drums in blows in when Miguel glances out the window the next morning. Flakes are still falling in the in the light by the porch by the front porch. Downstairs Tia Lola is not at breakfast. Good news, Juanita says as Miguel sits down. No school today. I do have to go to work, their mother reminds them. I'm glad Tia Lola is here so I don't have to worry about you. Where is she anyhow? Their mother glances up at the clock. She's usually up at this hour. She, seems a she seemed a little sad last night. She wouldn't tell us a story, Miguel admits. Did you hurt her feelings? She, since she is a psychologist, their mother always guesses everything that happens has to do with people's feelings. How could I hurt her feelings, Miguel says, trying not to sound annoyed at his mother. Her feelings are awfully sensitive these days. I don't even know enough Spanish to hurt Tia Lola's feelings. Tia Lola is a special person, Miguel's mother observes. She can tell the secret feelings in a person's heart. Miguel's mother gives him a look as if she can tell what is in his heart. The truth is Miguel has mixed feelings about having Tia Lola around. She is fun, but he sure doesn't think having her here will improve his chances of making new friends. Why can't Tia Lola act like, more like a teacher? Mrs. Prudy, who speaks without moving her jaw and is so proper that she says, pardon me, before she sneezes. Or like Farmer Becky, her shy next door neighbor, who dresses in a white pullover sweater as if she wants to blend in with the sheep she shears and tends. 
or even like her mother's new friend, Stargazer, who although she wears fanciful long skirt and dangly earrings, speaks in a soft voice in order not to stir up negative energies. You have to love people for who they are, his mother is saying, then you will all be, then they will become all they can be. That sounds like a real, but it makes sense. When Miguel first started playing baseball, Papi always would always say, great swing, Miguel, or nice try, even when Miguel missed the ball. Over time, his playing actually got better because of his Papi's encouragement. Remember, his mother continues, Tia Lola might be a little homesick. She needs to feel really welcomed. Miguel looked down at his cereal. Today he has gotten the blue bowl. He is sorry that he has made Tia Lola feel unwelcome. He knows what he feels like. He knows what it feels like. At school, an older kid in his class named Moore has nicknamed him Goose Man because that's, what's me, that's what Miguel's la, because that's what Miguel's nas, last name, Guzman, sounds like in English. Now other kids are calling, calling out quack quack whenever they pass him in the hall. Maybe they are trying to be funny, but it makes him feel embarrassed and unwelcome. What's the word for welcome in Spanish? Miguel asks his mother. Bienvenido for a man, bienvenida for a woman. His mother spells out the word. Word. Why do you ask? I've got a great idea, Nita. I'll let you. I'll need your help. Juanita nods. She loves to be included in her brother's great ideas. She doesn't even have to know what they are ahead of time. The snow is deep almost to his knees. Miguel trudges down to the backfield, keeping close to the fence line. The sun has broken through the clouds. All around him, the field is fresh and unspoiled by footprints and sparkling with, and sparkling with diamonds of light. He starts walking in straight line, kicking the snow to either side. Then he walks in a half circle, out and back to the front line and then out and back again. Every step of the way, he has to imagine what each mark will look like from the house. He thinks of his father in New York. Although he works set, setting up department store windows at night, Papi's real love is painting. Today, Miguel's feet, the clo today Miguel feels the closest he has felt to his father since his mother and Juanita and he moved to Vermont. He is an artist like his father, but working on a larger canvas. He is trying to create something that will have the same result, making somebody happy. At one point, he glances up and he thinks he sees his little sister waving. It is her job to keep Tia Lola from looking out the windows. The sun is right above his head when Miguel is done. Inside the house smells of something delicious, bacon in the oven. Tia Lola has prepared a special pizza with lots of cheese, bland black beans, and salchicha, a tasty sausage that she has brought from the island. Pizza Dominicana, Tia Lola calls it. Buen provecho, she adds. This is what she always says before they eat. Their mom has told them it is sort of like wishing somebody a happy meal. Tia Lola got to teach Rudy how to make this. Tia Tia Lola's got to teach Rudy how to make this, Miguel says to his sister as Tia Lola serves him a third slice. Pizza Tia Lola, he renames it in honor of his aunt. When they have finished eating, Miguel announces there's a prize for, surprise for his aunt in the backfield. Para mi, Tia Lola says, pointing to herself. Miguel can see the color coming back into her cheeks, the sparkle in her eyes. The beauty mark that was above her upper lip on the right side is now on the left side. Tia Lola tends to forget little things like that. It winks like a star. Miguel leads the way up the stairs to the landing. They line up at the big picture window and look out in the snowy field where large letters spell out, Bienvenida, Tia Lola. Tia Lola clasps her hands and hugs Miguel. Who says I did it, Miguel asks. Juanita and Tia Lola look at him surprised. Miguel points to the trail on the A of Lola, tracks a head toward the letters instead of away from them. Again, the Chicuanas have followed Tia Lola to Vermont. 
Ay, Miguelito, tía Lola kisses and hugs him all over again. Tú eres tan divertido. You're fun too, Miguel says. This time he means it. That's the end of chapter two, guys.